All right, so here we have a picture that could be a macro picture following our requirements, except what has happened. There's two. But yeah, there's, there's multiple things in focus here. I've got the dandelion over here, which has been close enough to the dandelion that's supposed to be in focus that it's been in focus too. This is called depth of field. This is an effect when you have a camera, a real camera, it has a certain depth of how far back things will be in focus. And this is something with a professional camera that you can actually affect with different settings. You can tell it how far back from the lens you want things to be in focus. And with a better lens, a better camera, you can actually adjust that to a really fine degree where you could say within a couple millimeters here back from my focus, my, my subject, things will be blurred and out of focus. And you can do some really, really nice effects. And the really top quality pictures that you see, especially really nice portraits where the people are in focus, and the backgrounds are blurred, and it really looks nice, those are done with some really, really top quality cameras. If you don't have one of those, which this person did not, um, you'll end up with a, a more messed up subject like this. But we can fix that. So we're going to use our selection tools that we've used before. Now, I always prefer my quick selection tool. You're welcome to use the selection tools that you prefer. We have the magic wand, which we've used before. And we also have even our lasso tools, if you prefer like a, a polygonal lasso tool. I'm going to show you a couple of different ways to do this. I'll first show you the way that I don't prefer to do it, and then the way that I like better. So I use the polygonal lasso tool. This is a, a tool that just lets me click, 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 and draw lines, right? So I'm going to zoom in to my subject first and try to select the thing I want to be in focus. So I'm going to come in here. I'm going to do the best I can to get as close to my subject as possible with my clicking. Go ahead and nope, that didn't work out. It doesn't like me scrolling while trying to click, so we'll just do the clicking here. Zoom to where I want to be. All right, we'll click around here. I'm going to make this pretty quick because I don't feel like spending the time to make it perfect. If you were doing this yourself, you would spend a little bit more time to make this as clean as you could. Obviously, I'm not going to spend the time quite to go to that level. But you just click around this subject. Click, 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 click. Well, I wanted you to see what can be done. It drives me nuts that I can't scroll. So, if I press escape, it's going to go away from my thing. See? So, you can see how you would do that. I'm not going to do the whole thing because that will take too much time. Um, but then what I would do afterwards is I would switch around. Let's do this real quick here. I'm going to do a just boop, boop, boop. Delightful, right? Real quick. I know, isn't that beautiful? So now, once I have the subject selected, what I actually want to blur is the background, not the subject, right? I need to right click here and select the inverse, which is the opposite of the thing I selected. And then I'm going to go to my quick mask mode. We've used this before, where it switches and it shows the thing I've selected in this pink. I then can use my paintbrush. And my brush tool will be brushing in black and white. When I brush in black, you see my black is my foreground color here, yeah. I get more pink. So that's more, I'm taking selection away and making more pink. If I switch them, so I'm just brushing in white, I'm brushing pink away. But you'll notice I'm doing it with a bit of a, a soft edge as opposed to this hard edge. So what I can do then is once I have my main selection selected, and you would spend a lot more time doing a much nicer job than I did, you can come in here and you can refine it. You can use your, your, your keys. You're seeing here that I'm using my bracket tools left and right here to make my, my uh, brush larger and smaller. I can brush away a little bit of this pink that I don't want. Come in here, brush away, brush away. Well, I do need a little more pink. I need to get rid of some of the stuff that I don't want here. I don't want it to be there. And again, I'm not taking the time that I could take. 
to do this, but I'm going to do it just real quick, just to show you how quick mask mode works. You get the, the initial selection done as rough as you want. Really, you can spend as much time doing that lasso tool as you want to, to make it as, as clean as you want, and then you finish it up here in quick mask mode with your paintbrush, making it as clean as you can. And you can go back and forth. Now I'll switch again to my black and paint in more pink because that's what Chloe thought I needed. Yeah. So we'll go ahead and paint some more pink in here. I want to get these leaves here painted pink to mask it. And come down here, soften that edge up a little bit. And you see now in this one, I can scroll around a little bit and it makes my life a little easier. I can move where I want to. I'll paint that in. I'll switch because I know that in here, I want to get rid of some of this pink through here. More of this pink in here. And eventually, I'll spend the time to make this look as good as I can. I'll switch back out of this quick mask mode. I'll click this button again, and I'll have my selection selected. Once I have the background selected, I want to feather it a little bit. Do you remember doing feathering for the selection? A feathered selection means that the edges of the selection have a gradient to them. They, they, it's not a hard edge. This is selected and this isn't selected. As opposed to that, a feather lets the edge of the selection kind of blend in gently. This is because when you do a proper blur on a background with a camera, the way it's supposed to be done, it's a gentle progression from here's my subject to here's not my subject. So we don't want to have a hard edge with my blur. If I do a hard edge with the blur, it's not going to look good. And I'll show you. Let's do a hard edge blur first. I'll go to filter. I go to blur. And the kind of blur that I want to add is called a lens blur. This is the exact same kind of blur that the lens of a camera would create. There are other kinds of blur. A Gaussian blur is the kind of blur that your cell phone, the different uh, panels on your cell phone have. You have an iPhone that has that fancy blur when a panel comes over another panel and it blurs the background. It's a Gaussian blur. A motion blur is a kind of blur that happens when something moves, etc., etc. Well, that's not what we're doing here. We're doing a lens blur because a lens blur is the kind of blur that a lens creates. If I do this, you'll see it does an okay job, but you can see that harsh edge right around where my, especially right through here where I didn't do a very good job selecting. You see that harsh line right through there and right through there. Let's say it's chopping it off. So that harsh line is not good. I'm going to cancel it. If I right click with my selection tool and go to feather, my feather radius is a certain number of pixels. Now remember, this is all relative. It's based on the size of the picture that I started with. The bigger the picture, the more pixels the picture contains, right? So uh, the more pixels I'll need for this to have a decent effect. The smaller the picture, the crappier the picture, the, the, the less pictures I'll need to have an effect. So the way I'll know how big my picture is, so looking up here at my percentage zoom. If this picture fills my screen nicely, and this percentage zoom is 50% or less, then it's a really big picture. I need more pixels to have an effect. If my picture fills my screen and, and looks nice, but my percentage zoom is a large number, like 90%, 70%, 100%, it's not a very big picture, and I don't need a very large number here to have an effect. Because it's a 22% zoom, that means that if I went to 100, this would be huge, right? So I need a big number here. I'm going to put in like eight and see what kind of effect that has. It is, though. For what we're doing, uh, if this is a smaller picture, I would only want one or two. But compared to one or two, eight's a pretty decent size number. I'll hit OK. And now let's see how, you see how it kind of rounded my edges off a little bit through here? Everything's just roundier. I'll go to Filter, Blur, Lens Blur. And it's just a little nicer. It's still crappy because my selection job wasn't very good. But you can see it looks nicer. And do you notice now the clear difference with this flower is now obviously out of focus. And I can adjust a few things in here to make it look different depending on what I'm trying to do. So I'm going to go for radius. I'm going to bring this up. And this will lag any computer down. Um, making blur effects is a, a very processor intensive thing. 
that will make computers lag. So even my powerful computer here does lag a little bit when bringing up this number. But if I really want a powerful effect here, I'm going to go above 50 probably for this number. And you'll see that, that effect. Let's hit OK. I'll right click, go deselect. And you see the difference in this picture from what it was before. Let's look at the original uh, dandelion. There's my original. And there's my blurred one. And you see, that's, that's the kind of macro effect I'm looking for. I'm looking for this close-up, subject in focus, background out of focus effect. Now, let's go back in my history here. And before I selected anything, the tool that I prefer to use for selecting things, as I said before, is this quick selection tool. I think it does a better job. And I'm going to go ahead and first tell it what I want. I want dandelion. I want yellow stuff. And I want this green stuff in here too. And then I have to tell it what I don't want. It messed up a little bit. So I hit the alt, I hold down the alt key and the alt key says take away things. I'm going to say, nah, I didn't want any of this, guys. Come on. Yeah, like, I, I got that figured out. I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. So then I, hold, I come in, I zoom in a little bit and I'm going to be a little more fine grained with my, my selection. I'm going to make my selection tool smaller. I use my the bracket keys, so they're right, right under your number keys. They look like like this, oh, okay. little brackets. Um, in the video, you're gonna be able to see them. It shows you all the buttons I press. But I wish I did that on the screen here too. But little bracket keys are right next to the P key on your keyboard. So I'm gonna hold down the Alt key, and I'm just gonna come in like this, and take it away, and take it away, and say, "No, nah, guys, didn't want that." And then I'm going to come in here and say, yep, I still want some of this dandelion. I still want some of this dandelion. And I'm going to slide around here and just check. And you can see it did a really good job initially with finding the stuff that I wanted. Like, it's, it's not bad. I can, I can spend all day coming in and out of here with tiny little brushes and, and, and telling it specifically what I'm looking for. And the more that I do that, the smarter it becomes. It gets better and better and better at this. The more time I take telling it what I want. You see how quickly it did that? I told it I didn't want that. I wanted this. Boom, it switched. It did a really good job. And it gets better and better at knowing what things I'm trying to select. It has a memory, and it keeps track of all this stuff that I want. The more that I tell it, I like these pixels, I don't like these pixels, and I paint away. And it also knows the size of the brush that I've chosen, and it makes the effect of what I'm doing different based on the size of the brush and it'll jump around and it, it helps me out it's a very good tool i love to use i think it's a very smart tool um it helps me not be bad at this and once i'm i'm pretty happy and i'm i'm honestly i'm, I'm pretty happy with the effect i've got here there's really not much more that i feel like i need to do which one this one all right fine fixed it so I feel like that's good enough for what I'm trying to accomplish. Way better than the last one, I feel like. I'll right click and I'll still do a feather. I'm still gonna do, well, I did a better job this time. So I'm gonna come in here and say like maybe six pixels of feathering. And then I still have to do, select the inverse. I can't forget to select the inverse. Otherwise it's gonna blur my flower, not the background. That's a big step that we can't forget. Filter, blur, lens blur. Hit OK. Right click, deselect, and there you go. It's a pretty cool effect. I really like how easy it is to do once you get the handle on things. And you can take any picture that you, you really wanted it to look a certain way, and you just couldn't set the picture up to look that way properly with the way that your phone was taking pictures. Come in here, use Photoshop, make it look right. So. Uh, that's all I really needed to show you with the Photoshop stuff. Let's go ahead and, and finish this out.